Why do I still love Fallout 3? As the first fully 3D open world Fallout made, after the acquisition of the IP by Bethesda, had very positive reception upon first release. It was a lot of people's first Fallout since they, like I, may not have had a computer and played on their Xbox 360, PlayStation 3, or were merely too young to have played the originals. Hell, I only just got the second Fallout and haven't even played it due to me wanting to replay the modern 3D counterparts. And despite the third installment not even being my favorite of the franchise, it was my first. And I'll never forget the feeling of exploring such a desolate yet intriguing place back when I was only 11 years of age. But the reason I love this game isn't out of pure nostalgia, as I played many games at that age that I've either forgotten or chose to forget, either because they lack the quality or the worlds and environments that simply weren't for me. I think it has to do with many more factors, including the story and the countless hours I've gotten out of traveling every square foot of the wasteland and still not discovering every area, plot point, event, or side quest. The sheer size and replayability of this game is astonishing, and considering this is Bethesda's first, and arguably best, Fallout, I'm happy I got to experience it before any of the others, as I may not have had the same amount of appreciation for this franchise and its countless little stories. The Story I love the story. All the little hints about you and your father's past that were to be explained as you grow older in the vault, suggestions that maybe you weren't born in the vault and that your father had a much bigger impact on the wasteland than just raising you in a quote unquote permanently sealed vault. You probably would have left for the nearby town of Megaton when first playing, since it has a mission marker on it to try and get hints about your father's whereabouts, just to be led along a series of quests that would eventually lead you to discovering the Brotherhood of Steel whom were previously introduced in the first two Fallout games. Of course, in the story, the Brotherhood of Steel play a pretty big part in it, being the good guy force fighting against the big bad guy force of the Enclave, who were thought to have been completely destroyed by the Chosen One, but they had a secret base established in the east of their main HQ, in the wastelands of Fallout 3. The depiction of the Brotherhood is a bit strange, I liked them a lot as a kid since they were big cool metal men, but after seeing them in New Vegas, learning more how they were originally depicted, they seemed too nice to the wasteland. At the very least, the leader of the Brotherhood explains why they've become so attached to the people, but it ends up making their characterization seem a bit flat. Same goes for the Enclave, being bad guys almost for the sake of it, once again being depicted much better in New Vegas with the Remnants. But Bethesda's first Fallout so I can let slide. Besides, I prefer this version of the Brotherhood over the almost villainous version in Fallout 4. I'll get to Fallout 4 in the future, don't worry. Anyways, I always loved how you could potentially just run straight to the vault your father is in to save him, and skip many of the early plot points as so that you could basically speedrun the story. And then, to have your father quickly killed soon after you saved him really hurt. Especially when I was younger, I thought that there was maybe a different way to approach the situation so that he wouldn't die, but at least that shows I felt pretty attached to the characterization of the father. And when I say father, I do mean that as in your dad, not the institute leader in Fallout 4, who is anything but your father. The finale of Fallout 3 was really good too, as long as the Liberty Prime didn't break during his pathing, and the choice of whether you, Sarah, or whatever follower you had to go in and activate the purifier having a difference on the end credits was a great attention to detail as well. Well, unless you sent Fox or a literal robot who aren't affected by the radiation to do it, and have the credits still call you a coward or whatever. The entire credits sequence is very impactful and probably my favorite endings in Fallout, at least without the Broken Steel DLC. And the story was at least accompanied by some pretty decent gameplay as well. Gameplay, gunplay, and melees. I'm not the biggest fan of gunplay in Fallout 3. New Vegas is pretty much just the refined version of this, and you really feel it when shifting from 3 to Envy. But that doesn't mean the gunplay is bad by any means. I still love playing through this entire game with a variety of weapons being pretty good, but I still quickly found my favorite pretty early on, that being the common but still fairly powerful hunting rifle. And I always play on normal difficulty in Fallout since I don't happen to enjoy getting absolutely plowed by every lowly raider on higher difficulties. I also like the slow power climb you feel during your playthrough, with your first encounter with a super mutant being one of the most terrifying things in the dark metro systems of Fallout 3 early on, but by the time you get to the late game, and you're in the vault where many of the super mutants emerge, you just shred through their numbers with only moderate resistance, especially with the help of a companion. My choice for a fellow adventurer is usually Buck, who can convince to join you after you've saved Vault 101 and have neutral karma. 
Speaking of karma, I may have mentioned that I usually play as a good karma character in Fallout games, which is still true here, but I had to manually lower my karma to even bring Buck with me. And I did do a little bit of bad behavior for my own gain a few times. Overall, however, I usually end these games with positive karma anyways. Onto the melee weapons of this game, they're alright. I only use them when I wanted to conserve ammo, or wanted to get a funny beatdown on whatever I was attacking. I actually kept the baseball bat from the beginning of the game and still used it a little bit every now and then throughout the majority of the main quest line, but the melee for me is Power Fist, my beloved. I didn't really get the chance to use in this playthrough, but I did collect one from an Enclave soldier near the end of the game, but I never had the need to use it after that. I'll probably get more into the Power Fist in New Vegas. I also find the default movement speed to be a bit slow, but it wasn't too bad when I would holster my weapon. Another part of the gameplay is the dialogue, and it is so good in this game. It took the spirit of the older Fallouts and made it work in this 3D environment almost flawlessly. I'm honestly surprised this was Bethesda's first attempt at it, and it went really well for them. I love all the different ways to interact with almost any character, and the sheer amount of dialogue options is staggering. And thanks to the lack of voice acting for the player character, they could do so much more than in 4 without having to make the VAs record for countless hours for every little interaction in this game. I'd recommend this game purely for all the RPG and looting mechanics. Outro. I'm not going to be covering the DLCs this time, but if you want me to in the future, let me know. Now on to the outro itself. I'm still not sure why I love this game as much as I do. I played through the entire story in one setting and enjoyed all of it more than I thought I would when initially starting, but as soon as the final time skip in the vault happened, I felt my love for this game come back, and despite the amount of bugs, crashes, and little annoyances, I can't help but love this game as much as I did five years ago, the last time I had a proper playthrough of this game. And well, that should be all for today. Hope you enjoyed your time here, I know I did. And check out my last video on Fallout 76 if you enjoyed this. See ya and have a good day. Bye.